Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about new discoveries and a new study that suggests there's a new resolution to what may have happened to water on Mars. And this particular resolution relates to another video I made not so long ago that made some really incredible discoveries about waters of planet Earth. And in some sense, these two studies relate to one another, explaining both planets really well. But let's start one step at a time. Now, first of all, we know Mars definitely had water, simply based on the observations from various satellites that have found several different signs of ancient rivers and even signs of ancient tsunamis that most likely happened on the planet when some sort of an asteroid collided with one of the poles of Mars. We've actually talked about this in one of the older videos on the channel as well. And so the presence of ancient water on Mars is not really questioned by many. As a matter of fact, most scientists definitely agree that Mars had a very large ocean that covered a pretty large part of the planet, something that might have made it resemble this a few billion years ago. But the question is, of course, how did this water disappear and what exactly happened to the planet to make this water all suddenly vanish over the past few billions of years? Now, the most common explanation today involves our sun and the lack of magnetosphere on the planet. Essentially, Mars lost its water, probably atmosphere as well, simply because the magnetosphere of the planet disappeared and was no longer able to protect the planet from the dangerous radiation from the sun, specifically various types of solar wind that can easily strip the planet of a lot of different particles on the surface. And because this has been measured many times, this is sort of a fact as well. But here's the thing though. Was this the only process responsible for the loss of water on Mars, or did something else happen? And how much water was there present to begin with? Which is actually where this study comes in and provides some really interesting and somewhat fascinating answers. With the main summary of the study being that it wasn't just the solar winds. A lot of water was also trapped inside Mars itself, very similar to how a lot of water got trapped inside our own planet. And a lot of water is still there today. But the way that it was trapped is kind of interesting. So first of all, we still don't really know exactly how much water Mars had approximately 4 billion years ago. There is, however, a lot of speculation that early Mars very likely looked like modern Earth. Although possibly also with a lot more ice cover on the surface and very likely with climates similar to what we have today in countries like Iceland. But once in a while this ice would melt and would create a global ocean as well. Today, however, all of the water is gone on the surface and only some water is still present at certain locations near the poles, with possibly some water being underground as well, with at least one lake previously discovered there. And so, naturally, the previous explanation using the sun as the culprit for the reason why Mars has no water made a lot of sense. And actually still makes a lot of sense, but the problem is we still don't really know how much of the ocean was present there and we don't really know how much of the ocean was lost to the sun effects and how much of the ocean was lost to something else. But based on a lot of observations from the NASA mission known as MAVEN, the scientists over the past few years learned a lot about the interaction between the sun and the Martian atmosphere. Specifically here, they learn how the water vapor in the air of Mars is bombarded by various ultraviolet radiation from the sun and how a lot of this interacts, eventually causing the hydrogen getting stripped from oxygen and essentially the water molecules breaking apart and escaping from the planet. Mostly because hydrogen inside water is a very light gas by itself and so it's not going to stick around the planet and essentially escapes into outer space. But today we know that there is an isotope of hydrogen known as deuterium and certain parts of water will contain this deuterium in there as well. Because deuterium is almost exactly double the mass of simple hydrogen, it's more likely to stick around and is more likely to actually remain on Mars, thus deposited in some sort of a rock or somewhere else where we can later find it. And because scientists today know the general ratio between hydrogen and deuterium in normal water, we can normally determine or estimate the presence of water on early Mars or really anywhere else for that matter using this technique. In other words, by comparing the number of deuterium to hydrogen atoms found in a certain sample, the scientists can usually estimate the total amount that was originally present in, for example, a certain sample somewhere else. And so by using various samples from various Martian asteroids, and by examining the amount of deuterium compared to hydrogen in them, the scientists were able to estimate that the total amount of water 
must have been much, much larger. And the amount of water present versus the effects we're observing with missions like Maven are almost impossible to explain if only the sun was responsible for making Mars lose all of this water. It just doesn't lose enough water through the interactions with the sun. Something else must have happened to essentially have all of this water disappear somewhere. And the best explanation here comes from some of the younger samples, samples that are less than 3 billion years old. For some reason in those samples, it's obvious the water has already disappeared which suggests that the drying of Martian surface must have happened within about 2 billion years or so. It was a relatively quick event. And well, it just so happens that there is a pretty solid explanation coming from this other study about planet Earth, the minerals inside Mars. And specifically, minerals tend to absorb more water as they cool down. We've briefly talked about this in the previous video. When I discussed this mineral right here that's very prominent in the mantle of planet Earth, the mineral known as ring budite. It just so happens that this thing right here is able to absorb a lot of water as it cools down. Or if we look at this from a perspective of a planet that was just born, as the early planet like Mars or even Earth cooled down and as the entire planet starts to slowly solidify and starts to produce all of these minerals, at some point a lot of these minerals will actually start slowly absorbing the water that's currently present on the surface. Okay, in this case it's actually a little bit too hot for water to exist. Here's a slightly more realistic scenario. So we have some liquid water here, and this water starts to slowly get absorbed by the minerals like rainwoodite, mostly because they tend to increase their absorption value as they become cooler and cooler. They're basically like sponges in a sense. And all of this water slowly starts to combine with minerals and eventually gets deposited deeper and deeper into the ground itself. Now on Earth, because of plate tectonics, some of these minerals will eventually release the water through volcanic activity. But on planets like Mars and possibly even Venus, where we don't really think plate tectonics ever existed, well, on these planets, it's a lot more difficult for a planet to recirculate the water back into the atmosphere. And so a lot of it stays inside and slowly gets soaked into the planet itself. With a lot of water possibly disappearing as quickly as within about 500 million years, simply because Mars is a much smaller planet, so it also cools down much quicker than planet Earth. And so these minerals soaked in a huge amount of water, anywhere from 30% to up to about 99% as estimated in some of these studies. And this would hypothetically give Mars these early oceans that could be as deep as 5,000 feet or roughly around 1.5 kilometers. So essentially these huge oceans must have existed here, but slowly disappeared because of the way that the rock absorbs water. And because all of these hydrated minerals were mostly older rocks, with none of them being younger than about 3 billion years old, it means that Mars lost water really, really quickly. Also, of course, implying that Mars looked like this for possibly a pretty long time, possibly over 3 billion years, actually. And the results from the study also resolve a lot of different mysteries, including the discrepancy between deuterium and hydrogen, including the calculations from the amount of water stripped from Mars today and the discrepancy between the expected amount and the amount observed, and also huge rivers and huge seas and oceans that used to be present on the surface, which would not really be possible if Mars had just a little bit of water like some of the early studies predicted. And the implication here is of course that a lot of this water, possibly most of the water on Mars, is still actually still there. But this time it's trapped inside the rocks. And well, this unfortunately doesn't help us at all. What I mean by this is that let's just say we hypothetically landed on Mars and wanted to get some of this water out of those rocks. We would have to bake those rocks for a very, very long time using a lot of energy. And it would be very difficult to recover even a tiny bit of water from those rocks. Going back to Rainwoodite, for example, by weight, only about 2% of the entire mineral here is water. And you need really high temperatures and pressures to basically try to extract the water from there. This here, for example, forms at about 2000 degrees Celsius and really high pressures inside planet Earth. And though maybe in the future there could be some techniques, for example, using lasers or something really powerful to extract water from those rocks, right now there's really no efficient way to do any of this. The water there is really stuck for possibly forever. Without some sort of a volcanic activity, without a lot of interaction inside the planet, trying to retrieve this water just like it's retrieved on Earth by the volcanoes is pretty much impossible right now. Nevertheless, this is an awesome discovery and it also explains a lot of things that we observe on Mars, observe on planet Earth, 
and also maybe answers a few questions about Venus as well. But this is something we'll discuss in some of the future videos. So make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and if you love Mars, check out some of the new t-shirts that are going to make you feel wonderful that are also available in the description below. Also maybe support the channel Patreon or by joining the channel membership because all of these things do help me quite a lot. Either way, hopefully you enjoyed this video, come back tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye bye.